Hi everyone. So today's look is just sort of a fun, um, yet kind of more educational geared tutorial. It's about transition colors, which is a tutorial I have been meaning to do for a very, very long time. And it's also about my chocolate covered strawberry blush application technique, which is basically contour, blush, and highlight placement. So I've already gone over that before in a previous tutorial. I can link that in the bottom bar. But I was asked to sort of revisit it, if you will. So we'll be revisiting that and going over transition colors. Um, the only reason the tutorial is colored is just to keep it fun and why not throw some fun into it. I usually keep basic tutorials basic, but um, I was in the mood for a little bit of uh, green. But uh, yeah, so I hope that you enjoy the look and thanks for watching. Alright, so to get started on the look, I've already prepped and primed my eyelids with Urban Decay Primer Potion all the way up to the brow bone and underneath the eye. I'm sure you don't need a million one tutorials on how to do that because everyone on YouTube does it. So now I'm going to be taking a little bit of Max Kid Eyeshadow and just this 222. Um, I would go in and use like a cruelty free like color from like the Naked palette, like any soft matte brown, but if unless I'm going to be using an entire palette of something, I really hate going into like 20 different palettes to execute a look because some people like to duplicate things pretty precisely and it's kind of confusing to see, you know, 20 palettes. So I'm just going to go ahead and take that, that soft brown kind of, well, matte looking eyeshadow. It's not a matte finish, but whatever. So just a soft one, does not have to be Max Kid. Inglot makes a lovely matte brown. So I know I do have some lovely matte browns from Inglot, but I also have plenty of MAC and I don't believe in wasting money. So I'm just going to go ahead and execute it with what I have of Kid. I'm also going to go down the eye shape right here and then just feather it in. So we're just going like this pretty much. So any tapered blender will do. It does not have to be the 222. I'm going to be taking a little bit more of Kid by MAC and we're just also and we're also going to sort of scoot it into the inner crease as well and just sort of bump it up against the nose bridge. Then I'm going to be taking a little bit of Saddle by MAC and we're just going to take that soft brown color you could take um, the Urban Decay Naked palette has Buck and Naked in it which are two lovely soft matte browns you could also take the Wet n Wild Vanity palette I just have my Vanity palette like tucked away so I have a tendency to reach for the MAC palettes first that and since they're more of the investment I would rather use them up before their pigmentation starts becoming a little lackluster. So I'm just going to sort of blend that out right here. And a little bit of corduroy by MAC. So sorry but this is just a medium sort of chocolatey brown and we're going to go ahead and go that, take that color into the very depth of the crease. Once again, the Wet n Wild Vanity Palette will execute what we've done so far. I might be taking a little bit of Too Faced's Nude Scene Eyeshadow. This, I believe, is a newer color. They also have a lipstick called Nude Scene and this is 2 whole 0.5 grams, same size as an Inglot um, square eyeshadow. This is very similar to Inglot's number 2, or sorry, 467, which I have raved about. The consistency is different because they're two different, you know, brands with two different aesthetics, but both brands are cruelty free. Both brands I like. So, I actually like this color a little bit more than Urban Decay's ABC Gum. 
I'm not gonna lie, I think that the price point for these two shadows, ABC Gum and Nude Scene, are similar. But this one actually has more, um, more, uh, you know, product in it. So this one is actually the better deal by far. So is Inglots. Inglots is a great deal as well because of, um, well, Inglot is cheaper than Too Faced. But if you can't get a hold of Inglot, I highly recommend this one. It's a very nice dupe of uh, Max Orb, which I love. Um, it's not as shimmery as Inglot's number 467, so it is very much like, like Orb, which is very, very nice. And I got this off of Hope Look during the big sale where they were selling like all the mats, and I believe there was, there's been a few sales where you could have gotten these mats, and recently. I hope they're not discontinuing them, but this is Urban Decay's Chronic, and it's just a really pretty matte limey green. It's not really even a traditional lime. It's very unique. So we're just going to go ahead and take that, and we're just going to buff that in right between the lid and where the dark, deep socket begins. Hope that makes sense. Also, if you got that weird green um, eyeshadow from the MAC Semi Precious collection, a lot of people have been figuring, trying to figure out what to do with it. It would look really good as a transitional color right on top, top of your basic transitional colors. I'm going to be taking a little bit of Too Faced's eyeshadow. And this is in Neptune, also 2.5 grams. And this is a very, very similar shade to um, Tentalia's uh, Blogger's Obsession Eyeshadow Jealousy Wakes, from what I've seen of it. I haven't seen it in person. But Neptune is kind of reminds me of that. It's just sort of like a, a V Luxe Pearl esque shade. So we're just going to go ahead and pat that on the lid. We're going to start dry. Now for a little bit of outer corner depth because I feel it's not quite as complete as I'd like it to be. I'm going to be taking the Wet n Wild Blue Had Me at Hello palette. Sorry about that. We're just going to go ahead and take that sparkly black you see. Since we already have plenty of like matte shades in the transitional areas, I think that we can afford some shine, since the only like sort of shiny duochrome -ness we have is directly on the lid. And plus this black doesn't really show too much grit and glitter, so anyways, it doesn't matter. So we're just going to go ahead and start whisking that up like so. And to kind of keep it up, I'm just going to take my makeup remover wipe and pull that up as well and so I think it's a big difference at least in drama with the two eyes so that's really where it's at when dealing with transitional colors it's all about shade 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 and graduating into another color to avoid harsh lines and uneven blending now I'm going to be taking a little bit of this sort of matte black color on my MAC 266 and I'm just going to pick up that. This is a very pigmented color, so we're just going to stay very, really close to the lash line. I, if this were to crack, it would wreck the palette, so just keep these palettes like out of a drawer that's going to get a lot of activity because you don't want it to crack. I'm going to be taking a little bit of Urban Decay's 24-7 liner in zero, or really whatever I have left of my baby black liner and we're just gonna go ahead and line the waterline I'm gonna be taking a little bit of Max Pro Glide liner in undercurrent it's just this sparkly green with um, yeah basically it's a non gritty glitter though it's literally a Pro Glide I bought a bunch with MAC Art Supplies this one's been Repromoted a few times. Um, I just don't really promote them because I'm able to get liners to stay, but never these. So now I'm gonna be taking a little bit of this sort of turquoisey green color, 
and you could also take Neptune if you don't have the Blue Hab Ab Me at Hello palette. But I suppose the Blue Had Me at Hello is probably the easiest thing I pulled up if you can get a hold of one. I know this one, I know they all seem to go by really, really fast. It's the only reason I recommend taking care of them if you have them and keeping them in a low volume, low activity drawer, even if your Wet n Wild palettes do get a lot of volume just because they can be soft. That's like my only complaint. But for $5, I guess you can't really complain. They're just always sold out though. Now we already did that black eyeshadow on the upper lash line and that was so that we could transition into a liquid liner in a little bit more of a softer, more feminine manner. Not so um, harsh, not so classic me. We're just gonna go ahead and line the outer area. And pull it up. It's unnecessary to bring it in if, unless you want to because there is already that black eyeshadow. It kind of softens it and blends it, transitions it together. So now that my tinted moisturizer is on, I'm just going to go ahead and use the MAC to the Beach Cream Bronzer in Weekend. And we're just going to go ahead and start pouncing that on the cheekbone with my Sephora Synthetic brush, Airbrush Brush in number 56. A good dupe of this is the Too Faced Cream to Powder Aqua Bunny, which I've already, re which I've already purchased from IMATS. So I'm already ready to go when this runs out, but I'm going to be showing you my little technique starts back here. Like I said, this is the chocolate, because I do a chocolate dipped strawberry with cream technique is what I like to call it. I know I'm not the only one that has this sort of technique, but it's kind of a little name that my friend showed me this technique. So it starts back here and then it goes up across the hairline to create a natural bronzing motion. And then we just buff it on the other side. You can leave this tiny, just a little tiny area of the forehead open for just like a gleam if you want, or you can just do an all over bronzer, it's up to you. I like that sort of openness through the center of the face though, but like I said, it's entirely up to you. I don't really like to do really like hard edge contours where, you know, you do that and then you just literally do a big fat line across your face. Not only does this serve as like a bronzing motion because you're warming the face up, but you're also slenderizing it, so it's like a two-in-one contour bronzing step. Really love it. Kind of also makes you like realize where the bronzer goes so you're not over powdering or overdoing your face. Because I hate ready bronzer, especially because if you spend all this time on your work, on your eyes, you don't want your face to, to look like your bronzer's eating it. I don't care how tan you want to look, <laughs> you don't want your face to look like your bronzer's eating it. <laughs> now I'm going to be taking a little bit of Max, frankly, Scarlet. Now before you run away, I'm, we're going to make this really beautiful and bitten. Tarte also makes a beautiful red, and Urban Decay makes a glide on cheek tint that's also red. Or they make two that's red, I'm sorry. So you just want to take some sort of a stippling guy, or even a fan tail. But for the purpose of showing you the strawberry dipped method, I'm going to be taking a more normal type of brush. And I'm just going to go ahead and stipple that on, saving the pigmentation for the back towards the hairline because that's where your face would naturally get shadowed. Now if I end up applying too much blush in this tutorial, um, I purposefully picked one that wasn't too light just to show you this technique. So the bulk of the pigmentation is towards the back of the hairline. Now if you have ever seen a chocolate covered strawberry or even just a plain strawberry by itself, you notice that the base of the strawberry is dark and it goes to a lighter strawberry. So back here the strawberry fade into the top portion. I'm going to be taking a little bit of MAC Silver Iridescent Loose Powder, and this is going to be the cream. I'm going to be taking a little bit of a, a little eye brush. It doesn't have to be this. Any blender will do. This is a basic 
iridescent highlight and a basic brush. This has no cooling effect. It's pretty, pretty boring uh, powder. It's just really pretty on. So we're just going to be doing almost directly underneath the eye. So this is the cream. So once again, you have the chocolate, you have the strawberry, the dark to the light, and then the highlight, which is the cream. So that is your chocolate covered strawberries blush technique. And it all just sort of graduates and goes together without weird harsh lines or too much pigmentation right by the eye. I think a really light delicate lip would really top it off very gorgeously. So for that I'm going to be taking a little bit of Too Faced Glamour Gloss in Peekaboo, which is just a soft, soft purpley lavender color. And this particular shade from Too Faced is getting promoted with their, one of their new bronzing sets coming out. So if you want this color and you want some bronzers, then I wouldn't buy them individually. Unless you don't want the particular set, but, it'll be, but sets are usually a better deal. So especially if you already have a lot of makeup, you're not going to go through a full size anytime soon. And it's really sticky. Obviously I packed on a lot for pigment, so definitely going to need to blot. Okay, so I hope that you enjoyed the look and thanks for watching.